Thanks. Sometimes we wanted to have soup for lunch just to see. <laughs> Okay, to extend that ditch, and we're still well within the way the DNR. No, it was NRCS. It, DNR was out there, and DN, yeah, DNR was out there. It was DNR that indicated it would be no problem to put the ditch on the north part of that parcel. Okay. Yeah, as far as okay. this is for the site, the site's there first. Apparently, the county or the ranch just has the right to go close. Two sets of rules. And that is weird to me. I, yeah, yeah. I guess, if it was well, the other way around, it does. You can't do it. So what do they do with any pollution into the ditch? Well, they were talked about with the engineers there that they'd maybe burn the, the site where the buildings would be higher What's than the other if they did south? that. So they'd have to they'd have to flood the Gotcha. Uh, yeah. We're talking about maybe trying to overflow into the DNR land. Yep. To Perfect. try source on there. I just worried about like a fish keel or you know, something crazy. Right. We can talk about that under drainage. Right. Okay. Which nothing on the site can leave and then they'll you know, they tile around the site, so the okay. owners of the site won't actually tile into the, they they use a sump pump in that case. So, so are they more, more worried about like uh, overflow from the site or just spreading on the ground and then it gets into the crickets? Well, that's why you do the, the phosphorus index, so they inject all the manure, so that's yeah. that's adjusted all the time with even, even ravines within the yeah, field, I, so they I, adjust for that. I guess I personally don't have a big problem. Nobody wants their manure in the ditch because it right. doesn't do them any good there. Right. And the right. site, you know, the walls and stuff are up. I mean, you have to flood more than just what that well is yeah, to get no. into a site. So okay. the only yeah. thing that, you know, you don't have any concern about is the perimeter tile where they put them in. So, you know, you just take that the other way or, or something. Okay. Or, and they all have valves. I, mean, I, I wouldn't have no a problem, problem with there. building it either way, which, no matter which came first. Right. Okay. But, uh, right. 
But as far as the distances for the, the, the you know, I guess the stage. Or you guys, you know, good. Yeah. yeah, the DNR is fine, yeah. whatever you guys do. Proximity to the other uh, people living around there. Because I noticed that they did move the site just a hair. Just a hair. Yeah. So that, and that all is good. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to get, make sure sure yeah. that we weren't bothering anybody. No. Uh, did, did we need to open the public hearing? I actually <coughs> just wrote that supervisor very we open the public hearings, but if you'd like to make a motion to do so, I, well, I, 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 just, I can make a motion to open the public hearing. All right, then I'll second it. Got it. So this is the part where the, the public can voice their concerns and yeah, ask questions about the project. And oh, that's fine. So do we have to say everything all over again? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they're proposing trees around the site. I guess that's the only part I didn't, you know, add. But that's in the main trees. So. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. Did you take the points for the trees or not? There, are, I can tell you. I think we did. I don't know if you did. Um, oh no, we didn't. They don't need the points in there. They were just right. showing you on the map where they were planning right. to put. East and the south. Yeah. Right. So that way they can plant this. That way they can plant the types they want versus it being dictated. So with the tree is going to be okay. scoring even better and higher. Yeah. So. So if you guys are okay with it, I'm okay with it. Blessing, I guess. Thank you. I'm all about the drainage. Yes, there you go. So. All right. Hearing no further discussion or questions or comments on the uh, public hearing for the master matrix for Newton 28, I will make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second it. On a motion from Derby and a second from Jensel to close the public hearing for master matrix Newton 28. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say sign. Motion carries. Third point of information. Where is this located? Uh, Newton 28. Okay. Beyond if you that. go up to Highway 9, go up to Highway 9, and you go two miles, or th three miles west, and a half mile to the south. Just if you look up the, the Halverson, the DNR Halverson uh, Wildlife Area, or okay. Wetland Area, it's next to that. All right. It's south of that. It's in Shutter's Land, though, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's about right here. Got it. Okay. Well, yeah, on the map. Hmm? Okay. About right here. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did, as a matter of fact. Because we had several people going, where in township is it? Okay. When I broke the story out, it was like, where? Oh, I didn't get that specific. And it was too late. Somebody had already left for the day, so. And the one that owns the land around it now it is uh, the one that lives a mile to the east. Got it. All right. Consider for approval, Master Matrix. Hearing no uh, opposition to it, I guess I would make that motion to approve the Master Matrix for Newton 28. I'll second it. On a motion from Derby and a second from Jens Hall to approve the Master Matrix for Newton 28. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Scott, yeah, we're ready for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, um, when the NRCS gets here, if it's earlier than 9:30, we might talk about that. Okay. Okay.
Did they send you the one with the quote in it then afterwards? Or? No, I called Kim, who then put me in touch with the Secretary of State's office, who then said, okay, let's get all this screened out. And then all of a sudden, as soon as I asked for it, suddenly it shows it populates in my emails left and right. But I had gotten a tip from the governor's office that some of the had taken place. So I said, okay, let me check this out. And then I called the office. All right. All right. Kate's office and put me in touch with Larry or somebody. I don't remember his name. Do we have a female landscaper on this property? Sure. Do we have a female landscaper on the property? On the courthouse grounds? Yes. Not that I know. Okay, well, somebody was digging around by the Spanish cannon. That's our. Yeah. So I'm just yeah, a bunch of stuff there. Just curious. Well, she's not digging up that uh, sure. wood pen. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do a lot of digging. What do you have, Scott? Well, like our last, last week it was crappy weather and they were setting that box, but they got it in the ground and started working on getting that all put back together. Um, finished, it sounds like they finished up gravel haul last week and they'll be shouldering next if they haven't already started. Um, fixing Edra, that kind of thing. Um, in the office, we have all of our paving plans pretty well complete. Uh, we'll have those submitted by the end of the day to the DOT for check plan review, and we'll get comments back and have final plans in about a month. Um, we're also working on three sets of bridge projects plans, hoping to have them all submitted for April wedding. So we got eight sets of plans we're trying to get pushed through and get finalized here in the short future here. So busy construction year next year compared to this one in the office as far as contract construction goes. Yeah, I would expect they've got equipment there and they're starting to work on that. I think he's got a crane date scheduled, so that'll be a big project too. The creek winds really erratically through there, and so we'll have to do a little bit of creative work with the channel, try to make it shoot through there. At Buffalo Creek. South Fork, Buffalo Creek, yeah. as it shows on the map. Yeah, it really roars through there when it rains hard, so they'll have their work cut out for them that way, too, since it's been so wet. That's what we call the raging buffalo creek. Yeah. Yeah. So. What's that? Sounds like it's already started. Yeah, they run on back over. But I don't know if I just a little bit ago. Okay. Since they better hurry. Yeah. Well, if everything freezes up, just make it firm. Yeah, and slow things down. Just depends. That's all I was saying. <laughs> and last year we set our last box, I think, in December. I remember right. Yeah. Doesn't always work out that way. Not ideal. Would rather have it done. So. Yeah. yeah you don't want to be totally at the mercy of Mother Nature and when she decides to really get the cold. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's the last major project for the year, and try to hit some of the small repairs and tile and culvert fixes. Um, what's the policy of the road department on trees overhanging onto roads? Um, we will trim trees up to the right of way line for stop sign obstructions, and. Uh, what if it's obstructing the road? Obstructing the road. We can trim those as well. 
um, there's a lot of those cases, so we don't always get to it. Well, one that thought it was on the blacktop of my own north of the uh, uh, persons in Vietnam. Somebody said they came out off of that road from the east or something, and it's like, it's really challenging. Mm -hmm. there. I mean, the first step is to talk to the landowners, see if you can get something done in cooperation, yes. And the other one would be uh, what used to be the Matthews place, which was mile east of Thompson and one one and three quarter miles south on the east side of the road. I guess that overhangs onto the road too. Go south on the from I think it'd be 30th Avenue on the east side of the golf course, and uh, it'd be down there a mile, almost two miles. There's evidently some trees grown from that road out too. I don't know whether it's grown. The trees are grown in a road ditch. I, I haven't seen it myself. I just had a couple of people say that they have to be able to drive their combine through it. Or combines, yeah. Yeah. But you get out there by hand with a chainsaw or Yeah, we have a you know, our sign truck has a bucket on it. So we got a little bit more ability to get up and trim trees now, but Yeah, it, it, I mean I guess that, if the trees were growing from starting from off the right away, I can't understand why it would be our responsibility in a sense, but uh, Yeah. I mean, most of those are groves that have just slowly encroached into the road ditch. So, ideally, the landowners would, you know, take care of that and control their groves. But it's an active maintenance that needs to be done. So it doesn't always happen. So that's why, you know, sometimes just talking to the landowner, they can decide if they want to do it their way, whatever. Well, this guy here would have to hire it done either way. Um, the other thing is uh, 150th Avenue, north of 400th, uh, just north of the West Prairie Church. Uh, I took pictures back in early June. It was bad, and things haven't changed. Yeah, the, the road surface you're saying? The, the road doesn't go like this. It goes like this. Yeah. Water sitting on the road. Yeah. Uh, this was on Sunday. The ditch, and then you just clean the ditch. The solution is there's no intake. Here. The solution is probably some more conservation practice in the field because we always seem to end up with a lot of siltation going on through there. Because I know that we've cleaned it out even since I've been here. And is that also a snow trap there? I would think. I mean, the, I mean that's, we're talking 20 feet above the road. Right, and from the, the from the wet from the west side. West. 
side of the road, the west side of the road. Yeah, it's also the kind of, of the west would be better. Grover trees that kind of get in there too. So it's one yeah. of those areas you need to look at possibly doing, you know, get, do something there to, to eliminate the snow trap and in the same manner try to eliminate the problem with the water drainage. <laughs> Not sure. Because in the long run, wouldn't eliminating a snow trap be beneficial? We do whenever we can, you know, when it's farm fences or, you know, scrub brush or whatever, but I think there's a pretty good bank of trees up there, and the land is higher than the road for, I mean, as far back as half a mile, I think. You know, on uh, 150th south of that church a mile, there's a, I don't know what the structure's called, but I call it a, a dam and containment for water. And it just slowly, you know, it fills up and then it slowly comes up. Would a structure like that be beneficial? That's the one with the sheet piling and looks yeah. like it was built by a DNR project or something? Yeah. We could talk to NRCS into funding something like that, you know, up above or something. And it, but it has to have a place for it to go, no matter what. Yeah. I think that they have had good luck. You know, there's culverts under the road, and the ditch can be there as long as it doesn't fill in. It's just there's no room there. There's just no ditch. Even when you do dig it down, there's just no, no room. There's no width. Yeah. There's no... Because of that high bank. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Something to think about, I guess. We can ask the NRCS to be here. If there's any programs. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the name of the picture. So through there. I've seen that kind of elevation change so quickly. I don't know if they dug it out for the road or if it was kind of like that and they skirted the hill there or what. But it's different. I know the DOT did a huge grading project on Highway 9 on the other side of Buffalo Center and kind of turned north or south toward Algona and tapered all the dirt work back at 10 to 1 slopes or whatever. And I'm sure that helped a lot, but man, did they move a lot of dirt. I mean, I'm sure there's an economic cost-benefit ratio there that makes sense for some projects. What was that equipment that they were talking about that they have for just cleaning up ditches? Was it? Oh, the grade all. They were spent about 4,000 on grade alls. They decided not to do it. They just sent it back over something. Just later. Grade alls, yeah, they're. You can't believe how expensive they are. It's just like an <laughs> excavator, but like on a big heavy chassis on wheels. Well, I think what they said was they did the grade all, and then when they went to get a new one instead of doing that, they did a, a better 
or an escalator to the other dishes. Yeah. Works pretty good when we have a good stretch of time to do it. Scrub trees, small trees? Well, they're getting to be pretty big trees. It's northeast about the center. Just wondering if they're too big to spray. Or um, they, maybe they got them sprayed and they're dying now. But uh, I did notice some of them that I had a complaint on before that were, okay, they were dying. So. Okay, yeah. The sooner we can get those to Robert, it seems like it's better. Yeah. Tell them, call, call you when you're at work. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, chime yeah. in at the board meeting. Yeah. Or if I would uh, <laughs> text me the information. There you yeah, go. There you go. Congregating amongst themselves out in front of Carlo's office with signs protesting. I can go get them and Chris. I'll be right back. general NRCS has practices we call them grade stabilization structures it's basically taking water from a higher elevation to a low elevation you're trying to dissipate the energy in some way either with a, a cutout or a rock shoot or a drop structure or something so when that water comes over that overfall it's not causing the erosion so there's a, a whole slew of different structures we do it's just kind of matching the right one to the right site so it's a possibility Sure, something like that is a solution, or if we eliminate the snow trap too and actually go through a big project to you know, slope it sure. back a ways. Gail, is it on the east side of that west, space? West side of the road. West side of the road, but the, the gravel road is on the east side of that property on that 80. Okay. Curse. Okay. Usually we wait for the landowners to initiate the contact with us, but there's no reason we can't cold call someone either if you know Lynn's kind of your local contact here if he drives by he can give him a call and say hey we see there's an issue and maybe there's something we can do to help and she came in yesterday to sign a 1026 mm -hmm. for the drainage project yeah I called it on it. <laughs> I was 
stimulates traffic for you. Well, the phone, the uh, all the letters hit Saturday. Oh. And Cheryl was inundated with phone calls yesterday. Right. She had a bunch of phone calls. I think she said she had a 10 plus. Because yeah. eventually what's going to happen is, is a lot of, well, like that one, he's downstream. So for us, we're only worried from where the ditch is going to start from there up. Well, there's two parts to this improvement, too. Okay. Well, are we calling the, the, the lower end an improvement? We're cleaning the trees out. Right now it's a repair. Yeah, that's a repair. repair yeah. But we're talking about working with the Corps of Engineers to straighten it out. Mm -hmm. That would be the improvement. And that's a separate project that in this time. The whole district and District 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, she did. She had a bunch of phone calls or a bunch of people. Yeah, there's a lot of letters and everything. Now. They all hit Saturday. I and Jacobs and Westergaard did send a copy of it to Cheryl. Mm -hmm. so just so you guys know that, I think they might have sent a couple of different projects. So at least she's got an idea what's coming. Or when they start coming in and ask what's going on, she understands what, where, how, from there. Okay. Well, we probably better get to our 9.30. Uh, 930 NRCS to discuss Randy Larson, landowner restoration project in Mount Valley, Georgia. So we got going. Uh, yep. So we're working on a wetland restoration with the landowner. Um, there's drainage district tile in this particular wetland. Um, and so we're trying to work with the landowner to disable some of that tile system. Um, so they would need to uh, ask you guys permission because that's your drainage district tile to disable that. It'd probably be just easiest if I could walk up and kind of explain what we're trying to do. Kind of. Um, so we have a drainage district tile 15. Uh, and there's lateral 16. Lateral 15 and 16. I don't know if you want larger. That and makes life a little better for me, at least. Yeah, there you go. So, okay, so this is DD5. DD5. Yep. DD5, lat 15 and 16. Yep. So, um, the tile runs from the north down the south this way. There's a lateral here. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife DNR has already done a restoration over here. So, the only thing that's draining into this particular lateral is uh, an intake from the wetland overflow and that runs into the tile here. Um, this particular drainage district tile there is a uh, private tile from here on up that's considered private that is connected to it. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a structure down here and there is a picture of that example structure. Looks something like that. So it's basically a a flash board, just put a set of boards in here, that'll raise the water level, and then there'll be a hole on the side of it that has a triple tube. So the proposal would be to disable this section of tile right here, and disable this section of tile. Right um, there's a yellow line here. Um, Matthew Rauch owns the property to the north, and he's Mr. Larson on board with this too. Yep. So it's basically they're they both are enrolled in easements. Okay. Um, for wetland restoration. All right. Yeah, so what I was just explaining to them, uh, there's Mr. Rauch, Matthew Rauch. These are the people. Okay. Both come together. So the only private tile that is connected to that drainage district tile is part of this big tile down So there's not anything that's coming from the road or any other land over yet with the rain.
Section 20. Actually, if you start at Mr. This approximately here on up, that's actually considered private tile. I think the county stops at the property line, which would be the old Herb Peterson farm. I think that's where it stops. I think it's okay. private from other yes. history as a whole. Yep. Right. Yep. There isn't anything that we know from going up. We went up. There's a driveway up here. A uh, gentleman has the acreage and a couple acres over here, and I had talked with him last summer when we were doing some tile investigation and he didn't his tile didn't go that way he didn't have any drainage going that way that we were worried about under his driveway that we'd maybe negatively affect him on the top end and he didn't know of anything and from there everything else should go north from his property Basically, if you go north of where you just did some drainage work there on Tom Barkham's permit easement, Aiden Kelly is that stub where I would go south, go north a mile and a half off of Highway 18 there. Highway 9. For Highway 9. So there would be a portion of tile downstream on Mr. Larson's property. Um, there's kind of a basin below kind of the main restoration that we're looking at doing. That tile would be left intact. It's kind of uh, in an area there that just kind of, it ensures that we're trying to make sure that once we do the restoration, none of the water leaves the property that we do the restoration with. Um, so to ensure that we kind of have a big basin area um, we're going to leave that tile intact, so there's kind of a buffer between Mr. Larson's property and the neighbor's property. Um, we probably put an intake on that drainage district tile. Um, that would be restricted. That way we don't overload the water or the downstream tile. Um, and then we'd also have a trickle tube above it. So basically we're trying to make sure we match. The amount of water that's currently going into the tile, we're not going to put any more, not any less. We're just going to try and basically match. That way we don't overload it um, or send any water to the downstream neighbor. So, Most of the time, your downstream landowners would probably have an added benefit because there's a significant amount of water that's coming off like that DNR wetland right now that's going right into the tile. Um, this basin will be big enough that there's going to be quite a bit of storage there for uh, any runoff that comes during your rain events, that type of thing. Take pressure off their tiles and their ground. Exactly. Their ground yep. so. um, the basin area that we're looking at do the, doing the restoration is really large in this case. Usually we have a lot of area or a lot of runoff, but a small storage area. In this case, we have a really big storage area. Um, so in most cases, like I said, the expectation would be that your downstream landowners will actually have more capacity in their tile because we're storing it now in the wetland rather than sending it all downstream through the tile. Um, and then in those times where there is a lot of rain, you know, four plus inches of rain, something like that, then we're going to have the intake, the trickle tube, and those things there in place to try and to get that water back in the in the tile system, but it should never exceed what's already existing, right, is the way it's been planned. So at this point, we're really just looking for whether there's interest in, from us to allow for something like this to move forward. Yep, and then understand what your process is. Um, if the landowner has to ultimately make that request, or maybe you need to have a public meeting, any of those things, I'm not sure what your process is. We also have that. Uh, we have a policy in place that when we do something like this, that there's certain criteria that you guys have to follow sure. as far as maintenance and things like that. I think we've done this before, right? 
document drawn up for that. I think that's the one that Scott did. Wetlands impacting Winnebago County Drainage District facilities. Yeah. So that would be our process to go through something like that. Okay, and that agreement between the district and the landowner? Yes, okay. and the auditor. Yep. And Matt Rauch signed one. I didn't hear anything from Randy Larson. I don't know if you guys did. Yeah, Randy called me this morning. He okay. hasn't had a chance to look at this stuff yet. No problem. And he wanted to look and make sure, mm -hmm. you know, before he signs it, that he understands. And I said if you had any questions to give you a call on Perfect. the form. Perfect. Yep. So yep. he's going to try and look at it later today. Sounds good. Going on, so. Okay. Do you have any concerns over this? Not that I can I would like to make sure that all the landowners in the two laterals are aware of what's going on, just to make sure I did give Lynn a copy of it, of the classification. Um, that would be my concern to make sure that they all know what's going on. I think it should be whether we, they send a letter or we send a letter. Right. It sounds like most of them should have a positive. Yeah, I just, I just want to make sure everybody is aware. But yeah. you, never, mm -hmm. you never know if there's one, you know, one private tile going into it. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. And the list that you were going to send out, is that <coughs> downstream landowners or just upstream? That's the whole lateral who pays okay. into it. I see. Mm -hmm. So is that 15 and 16? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much all we need to be concerned about. Right. Yeah, and I think in your letter, it probably you probably want to put where uh, the location is and then how many feet. I think, Lynn, you figured it's probably 1,100 feet of district tile, of district tile so that'd be disabled in the upper reaches. Would that be something you'd like to draw a letter? Or something? Also, or if you want us to do it. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to mess it up, what okay. you're doing. Construction will take place probably till next summer. Okay. At the earliest. So it's in June. Yeah. Do we need to have a public hearing on it or <coughs> not? I don't, I don't think we did the last one. I don't think so. I just think if right and give them kind of a date. If you don't agree, let us know by such and such a date. So where we can clear up any questions they have. We'll, kind of, we'll just put them on hold until we find out if it goes through here and if they have questions or whatever and you want JD to come and explain his design, he sure can. I think if I have any questions, let's just play it by ear. If you have questions, yeah. we'll just have them call you guys. And if you feel that they need more, then we can set up a hearing or something. But I think if they're okay with it and you can explain it. If they're okay with it, then I think we should be I think, I think we're on board with it as long as there's no effective landowners that are against it. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. All right. That's good information. I would like to see better filtering processes and storage. Maybe take some burden off some of these antiquated yeah. Yeah, I mean, your downstream landowners, there should be a benefit. Um, the only folks that would really have a concern would be your upstream landowners, and in this case, we're not aware of anyone that's not part of the restoration that's having private tile disabled. So, Do I need any more signed besides Randy and Matt? Do I need all of those landowners to sign it, or just the two that are requesting it? Do you care? How many people were in? Quite a few. These two are the only two affected, and we think that those are the that only we can be good enough. That we need. Yeah. So anybody that's in the watershed of that part of it, do they just uh, uh, geographically drain onto it naturally, or is there? There's the one acreage. There's the one house that is just it's plenty high above it, but there's the one house on the east side of it. I assume that's one of those names. I don't know. 
think I think um, I see the name, but I know what his name is. The Larry Flick. Oh, uh, sixteen. There yeah. There. And that's Matt Rauch's sister and brother-in-law. It's okay. not them. It's the one they. It's that house. There's two houses on that little driveway. Um, yeah, it was a Peterson place. I don't think he's on here. Hey, no, it's not Teglin. Teglin's Teglin's live there, but as far as we know, they have their own leech field and they have no tile. Okay. And they're up substantially higher. They kind of live on that little knoll mm -hmm. up above it. Yeah, I haven't been out there in a while. I mean, we can live right on, the guy lives right on the north side of the driveway, but they use the same driveway as Ralph's Flix. But all he has is a little... His name's on there. Like, he drained, there's a culvert through the driveway, and then they surface drain his... There isn't a culvert through the driveway. There isn't a driveway. Yep. You can see, because it's usually in the water. Yep. Um, then they surface drained it to the south, and that's where it hits your ladder. Yeah. Um, it's on there, it's on top. Dagget. Dagget. Yep, that's fun. And I talked to him. Okay. I met him up there in the field mm -hmm. and chat with him. Okay. And he didn't know of anything that was going that way. Yeah. Then I agree with you. If it's just the two that it's really going to affect, then I'm good with that. In this case, too, anything we're doing would be disabling. We're not replacing non-perf. Um, so the tree concerns or anything like that really aren't an issue because the tile is going to be completely disabled. Okay. Um, the landowners would still need to maintain the, the infrastructure that's going to be left in place. Mm -hmm. If you maintain the trees on the top over the tile in those areas. Um, Ultimately, that's their responsibility as a landowner. Um, we do stress that we have a document that's basically, uh, they call it o &M, operations and maintenance activities that we go over with them in the future that, hey, these are the kind of the critical areas that you need to, you need to keep trees off, you need to maintain that type of thing. Um, and that drainage district tile would be one of those. Can I have a copy of that? <clears throat> um, Whatever you use? Yeah, and it's... They could reformat it to work. Sure. Yeah. Yep. That'd be great. Yep. Well, I think we'll wait to see what comes back from that list of client owners affected. Sure. But otherwise, I think we'll pretty much on board. I almost think the letter... I think we should have NRCS uh, kind of a synopsis or a summary of the restoration but i really almost think the letter should come from you guys okay because it's your infrastructure okay their drainage district and it's going to be disabled <coughs> through that agreement so yeah so if you can give me a synopsis of what you're doing yeah and then i'll just give you a, a letter yep. yep yep i can then just make sure they know there's it's no cost to them. Right. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? Because right. they, they might yeah, freak out about this. Oh, yes. Oh, what's it going to cost? Right. Yeah. We're, right. Right. Sure, you know, we're paying 100% of this, so. Right. So yep. they know. Okay. And then I think when we could have, I think your contact in there also as the local, if they have questions on the restoration, because mm -hmm. I know you guys don't want them to come to you and say, well, what are you going to do? And you guys, well, it's just ask the landowner, you know. Yeah. So that Lynn has a point of contact for that. Mm -hmm. We have a plan in place then. Sounds good to me. All right, here are the letters. Sure. Mm -hmm. for coordination. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. I do have a question for you before you leave though. Sure. Going back up to number five, discussing drainage matters. Um, DD 11, which is next to the uh, state owned land on the Halverson track, uh, east of Thompson. Uh, we're going through an improvement project. Uh, that will be just south of the, the uh, uh, state owned land. And I was asking Lynn what it would take to have, say, some overflow from this new ditch coming through. It's a tile now. We're going to make it an open ditch. Is there a way to create the structure to where it overflows into the state land? But then it also affects uh, the adjacent property owner across the road, too, because he flows through there, and uh, it's currently in CRP, but the state land is in WRP, and 
it was bought with uh, Fish and Wildlife money. And uh, T.J. Herrick from the DNR said he'd welcome anything like that as long as it doesn't uh, uh, raise concerns with the Fish and Wildlife when it was bought. And I'd say from our aspect, um, we'd want to see like what's engineered just so that that overflow doesn't cause us problems, kind of just similar to you folks. We just want to make sure that whatever would flow there, how's it going to get back into the system and make sure that we're not going to have erosion or anything like that. Um, we'll always take more water if we can have it. We just need to see a plan and then we do a compatible use for that to, for that type of work. So. Uh, but to the west of this, the state land is a, a low area that goes through a culvert. I don't even know if there's a district child there or not. A lateral child. I should say. Is the state land you're referring to under NRCS easement? Yeah. Okay. It's owned by the Okay. Sure. It's a multi Okay. And they don't have plans done yet? So I can have him send what he's got, maybe, for the tentative to you, the engineer. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice just to see what type of, like, what are they thinking? Because it's pretty, it's not, it's not real hilly there. It's like no, that's why they want to put in, make the open dish, extend it, because they can't get the size of pipe underneath the ground. There's no cover. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just anything mm -hmm. that we can get so that we can see. Same thing we're doing here. We're going to have to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Get the approvals. Yep. So. I will send what I have. Well, I have think I have you have a copy of uh, Popper's you know, drawing. So this is actually the yeah. landowners. With their personal so yeah. Yeah. Oh, you do yeah. have the yeah. main tile yeah. project? Yeah. Okay. It's still got landowner. Yeah. 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 So. Perfect. So we're looking for any possible avenues we can go with that just to see if we can filter some water through that wetland area. Maybe alleviate some of the downstream pressure. Do you guys have a time frame like on the whole project at this point? It like, probably wouldn't be until at least spring probably. Okay. At just least. Because if we say we we dig out the ditch and we throw everything to the south, make the lower the north bank towards the state land lower. We, you know, we, we were talking about putting some type of a, uh, culvert in, like a surface culvert in, but it would flow out rather than in, just for those high high times. I would say, I mean, our philosophy whenever we do a restoration is don't make maybe all sweater that doesn't want to be part of the restoration and maintain what infrastructure that needs to be maintained for upstream landowners. So whoever's designing it, as long as they're keeping that mindset when they design, I'm sure in terms of a compatible use for NRCS, it'd probably be welcome. This is right now, you've got, you've got a uh, open ditch that ends here, and then we're going to just take it and go like this. But there's a lateral that goes into that wet tunnel. Whether that was completely eliminated or if it's still there servicing something on the other side, I'm not sure. I don't know. But it just ends in the wetlands. Sure. Um, I'm just judging by the number of trees in the wetland, there's no way it's working. Sure. <laughs> um, so where that tile crosses the fence line, just, I'm thinking it almost have to be some kind of dam structure there to keep it from overflowing the land. And then how it affects the land to the west across the road. Is yeah, that's the biggest thing we'll have to take a look at that we don't back it up to the gravel road and in yeah. the neighbor to the west. And we gotta know is that a is that a farmable wetland now across the road or is it Yeah, I don't it's a wet area yes, and no, it's in PRP. You know, FWP program. But I don't think it. Can. My guess is it. That's just a guess. Yeah. So 
maybe we can encourage them to get that parcel in as part of the Well, and as part of that drainage district, as far as the letter should have been sent out to get the determinations made. And Roger did contact Larry. Because some of those upstream, I think those will have to be addressed. I'm get a mile west. Yeah. All right. That's a lot of good information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got a whole 25 minutes out of you guys. Great. Take some setup or if they pull a trailer and I don't know. But it's not, not shut off until midnight, so I wonder if there's enough time just after work to set it up.
motion to cancel the second thirty and approve the auditor's quarterly report. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say aye. Motion carries. 10 a.m. Dave Randall ran construction to discuss front entry project with possible action. Morning, Dave. Good morning, Dave. What, what uh, we're asking the fella at the uh, Stone Company that we thought we had a few months till his retirement, uh, that will be Thursday now. Oh, he's moved it up a little bit. A little bit. So the problem we have, we would like to get a contract done so that Dave, they have Stone to pick up this week that while he is there, he can get the particulars written down, get a contract signed, so we're not trying to deal with the next whoever steps into that because we don't really know. And whoever it is, there's going to be obviously be a learning curve and, and all that. So that's why we're here, excuse me, here today to uh, see what you want to do with that. Completely up to you guys. I think it would be wise to go ahead and get this taken extremely wise. But that's... Uh, that's up to you guys. Do you have, do you have this? Well, I think in our previous discussions, we put priority on this project and we discussed that now would be the time to do it and be done with it. We're going to have to borrow the money to do it. So I'm sorry. I guess my opinion is we need to do it while we can. Mm -hmm. I think we can probably save a little money. It's not going to be any less, but it might be more to over. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not like any of us make any cheaper. I guess what Dave would need would be just a signature. Now, this will not be an official change, or this is kind of. You know, you've already proved the purchase of the stone. This is getting the stone shaped and right. Basically, we'll have the Legos, if you want to say that, to go into place. So I guess that's if we're looking. I, I don't know how to handle that. I'm not on that side of the desk. I don't know how you want to do that. As far as making it official, so Dave has some protection. I don't know what you want to do bonding-wise or anything like that. That's, that's on you. We'll have to address that. We're, we're sitting by right now. The, um, the money's budgeted. We just need to have a um, basically a bid letting for interest rates. So we'll do that in probably in a couple months. Um, this is, uh, we'll have to get an official change order from Rick, but this is um, for now, this is just a kind of an estimate of what we've got going on. Um, talks about what, what's included, what's not included with uh, the estimated price we have right now. So it says proposal for a change order is number six. Is it, you said it wasn't a change order though, so. It, well, it will be because it, will be. it has to go through Rick, but we, we uh, Rick is not We're signing off on the proposal. For yes, the so that when Rick gets us the actual form, we can go ahead and. Like with everything else, we have to approve something <laughs> first, then the official documents come to us. Yep. Yep. Kind of what we're trying to do, Terry, is just basically <clears throat> step one, trying to just focus on giving Dave authorization to get that stone cut so that we don't lose all the experience that this guy is going to take with him when he walks out the door, you know, the, the rest of it, I, I don't know if you can separate it out that way. I have no idea. But uh, that, that's step one. That's kind of what we're looking at is just an official authorization for him to go ahead and, and get that stone cut or at least get the agreement to get the stone cut. Let me rephrase that. Get the agreement to get the stone cut. Basically, I found this out on Friday. Today's Tuesday morning. Uh, I just didn't have time. I called Rick, but Rick didn't get back to me. So, you know, I couldn't give you the exact document. Rick couldn't get you the document in time. What I did is I put everything together, 
so that you know what it's going to be. It just needs to go through the proper channels to be all properly done. Right. Okay. So that everyone is protected. Most of these things we do, I guess, takes two approvals. One to get it going and another one to do the final documentation. Approval. Well, it's just um, if I sign a contract with him, I'm going to go pick up the stone myself so I can actually sit and talk to Bill and make sure everything is perfect. If I sign that, there's, that's a huge portion, a very huge portion of that is that stone. So if I put my John Henry on that, then then I'm responsible for that. And I guess I didn't want to do that. And if we can't do it, we can't do it. I mean, that's okay. I think we're, you're okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think we've been on board with trying to get this completed. That's the main focus. We got to get this done. I think the timing of this is critical right now so. the actual work will not get done probably till after the first of the year and we may we will tear it down what they want is a sample of each stone so when we tear it down we will say one of every kind different kind so that they have it so and then they will make it to exact measurements uh, so some of the fancy ones, the intricate ones, uh, and we found any source for carving those or? So we, I contacted somebody up in uh, the cities in Minneapolis who does stone carving and he's working on an estimate. Okay. Um, and that would be, I mean, that would be on top of the amount there, but as soon as he gets that, we'll let you guys know what it is. And that was, that was just for the three faces, for the three keystone faces. The, and the blanks are already included in that price. The only difference will be we'll have to get those to him, he'll carve them, and then we'll have to pick them up. Right. Right. Well, I guess I'll make a motion to approve the proposal for the East Entrance Project. Process moving forward with that. I'll second it. Motion from Derby and a second from Jen's World. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Can I lose your copy of that so I can have a copy and you can have a copy? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. What about this signature on this? On this, on this one. That's all I've got unless you've got questions. You think anything else, Dave? Okay. Nope. So we, we're on open forum after this, so if you want to talk about your drainage problem. Mm -hmm. well, 
Now it's time? Yeah. Just. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Al. We, uh, girls finish their project out there. We tore out that, that I think you call it a French drain, whatever. Water's kicking out on the ground, but it's doing what we know it was going to do. It's still flowing south, downhill, and overnight it even made over the sidewalk. I've rerouted a couple sump pumps. That's not long term because it's going to freeze up here at some point. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know if you want to get a civil engineer. I don't know if that's something Scott can look at and try and come up with a plan. I don't know what to do with all the water from well, about here that goes that way. <clears throat> it goes down to that drain when it was originally engineered. It was fine to get down that drain into the street, float away. And I don't know if it's extremely wet years or, or what's going on, <clears throat> but there's a lot of water down there. You can walk down after the meeting and take a peek at it. Well, it's running over the sidewalk. It's running over the sidewalk. Yeah, so we, put, uh, we put gravel in there instead of dirt just so it didn't wash onto the sidewalk and, and well, road stone, I think. <clears throat> but at any rate, I wanted to bring it to your attention. I don't know if you're going to respond this way because I literally don't know what to do with it. I don't have the money to... I would assume it would be a civil engineer. I don't know to try to come up with a plan. I don't know where you're going to go with the water. I don't know what you're going to do with it. And I don't know well, how you're going to get it there. Basically, the city told us that we had to get rid of that drain the way it was. Correct. We did what we need, what we could do. We put it on the lawn. The lawn, the lawn only holds so much water. There's, there's only so much we can do, and we've done what we can do. That's my opinion. Well, I, you guys will have to tell me because the water did go over the sidewalk. If the water, if the water doesn't stop coming up, and it will, it will dry out like it does every fall. We're going to have ice on that sidewalk, and we'll obviously do our best to alleviate that in some way, try to channel it over, whatever. But we're still going to have ice on that sidewalk. I just don't want the city. Usually, they send someone down to uh, discuss stuff with me, and it isn't so much a discussion. And I don't want you guys to come in, well, I, we didn't know any of this was going on. And I could use some direction if you want to change, if you, if you want to let it stand pat and say, look, we did what we could do, and we keep salt on that ice. I mean, I'm hoping it isn't terrible this winter, but I'm not going to guarantee it. So it, it's exactly from day one, well, we, we told you it was going to happen. Water's still going to flow downhill. It's still going to go that area still going to make it into the street. You know, if we had a storm drain out there, our problem would go away. But we don't. Mm -hmm. So, you can give it some thought. Is that a problem because there's no storm drain in the street? That's that's my really layman's opinion. I mean, the nearest one I know of, well, there's something in the Waldorf parking lot, but I'm not sure if that ties into the city or if that's there. The nearest one I know of in cities is down at 4th Street, I think. That's the, the inlet is down, I know for so, sure. So what's on that corner by the, uh, the Iowa? Didn't, didn't I, that I can't tell you. There? There's, there's storm drain in there. I know I've been told. I have no firsthand knowledge that there's a drain that goes out to the middle of that street and ties into the storm drain at some point there. But as far as an inlet... I'd have to go out there and look. The service and light. I don't think there's one out there. I'd have to go look. I don't know. I'm not going to say because I don't know. Where was it the water went before that they wanted us to change? Into the street. Just went into the street. And we had an undercut in the sidewalk. There's a gap about this wide. Yeah. This went down and into the gutter and down. And, of course, that froze in the winter. And it, it has gotten worse the last couple of winters. Why? I'm not particularly sure. It just has. Yeah. Uh, the ground moisture is, you know, the it, level is, is up. It's higher. And we've been really wet the last two years. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I suppose it's possible to pour wine into the, uh, use one of these boring companies to push something in to drain it all the way down there. I mean, anything's possible, but. At what cost? At what cost? And it would solve a lot of problems. Oh yeah, we had a drain, it solved a lot of problems. What's your thoughts? Since you're a road. Yeah, two, two ways to get rid of it. There's a 
get it to a drain somehow or sometimes somehow try to infiltrate to the ground and I don't know what the water table is right now but it's probably not far under the ground the so only way to get it to a drain would be to you know bore a forest main somewhere you know and pump it to a outlet or the, the city didn't like the ice build up in the street was that correct it? Well, the city sent out letters to anybody who had, and I don't remember what the letter said, but basically they told us they wanted us to pump the water onto the lawn, and that's what we did. We don't have enough water to store it, there's too much slurring. Yeah, unless you can... It sounds like yeah. to me, for, for now, the best solution is just leave it the way it is, and try to solve the sidewalk. Okay. That's, that's all I need to know is some direction, because it's... Everything it's, else is going to be... Expensive. Uh, I, I, without knowing, I would guess yeah, it'll be yeah. really expensive. Yes. And, I mean, Mother Nature's Mother Nature. The water flows first and flow, and there's only so much you can do. Yeah, I, you know, with a little bit of luck, maybe things will dry out and it'll calm down, the ground will freeze. In a normal winter, you get a drop of water every minute or two into that sun, into one of the sump pumps. You could hear it that literally every once in a blue moon you'd hear a drop. Well, last winter it's it's trickling constantly, which. But I just I want some direction and some input as far as what you guys want to do with that, and if that's what you're telling me to do, we'll do the best we can with it and uh, try to alleviate as we go along. And because cost wise, I wouldn't even. Venture again. I'm guessing you wouldn't even want to take a ballpark on that. What you got? Say it again. To uh, do a directional bore down to yeah, or, two blocks or oh, yeah, you're, you're either going yourself. this way or that way. You know, if you're force force meaning it, you can push it either way. Depends if that landlord or not. Wow, well, that's the I wouldn't down. think it be any issue with how much flow. I mean, pump everything you'd need through a two inch pipe or. I would think a two inch could do it. I Even if that was know. blowing full all the time in a storm sewer that's 12, 15 inches big. It ain't going to make enough difference. You know, I may mm -hmm. pump out 10 gallons, maybe. You know, it's just a sump. A sump yeah. well. So I don't think that'd is. be concerned. Just be getting it there and then maintaining that pump system. Yeah. Well, yeah. well the boring, what is it, a couple blocks? You get a well, it depends if you can it's somehow get to that corner. Corner over there, yeah. <clears throat> I would think just to get the machine here would be a couple thousand dollars probably. Is it? Oh, they do directional boring for all these uh, winter. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't the city not want you to plug into the sewers? Sanitary yeah, sewers. Sanitary sewers. <laughs> yeah, I can understand. Yeah, they didn't want, they, in other words, they didn't want the, the, the sump pumps to pump water out so that it would go into the street sewers. That would be it. And, uh, I'm pretty sure it's sanitary sewer. The treatment they're, they're, they're fine with the water going into the street until it freezes and creates a nice problem. Well, that's my point. I mean, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't want it going into the drainage into the system, storm into the street drains, yeah. because that was creating ice on the, on, on the road. The road. Yeah, we do it underground. I guess. I don't know. Sounds like they need to talk to the city. I just, I just remember Barb saying something do. about that. I think it's worth at least investigating the cost of pouring it to a nearby facility and see if we, the city will allow us to do that. Yeah, I have no idea. No clue. So, and I'll be honest, I don't know how to go about that. Is that something you guys do? Is that something Scott does? I, I don't know. Aren't you in charge of this? <laughs> you know what I think, so I'm out. Well, at this point, Bill, you've told us we're going to stand pat for the moment. Because there's no money in my budget to do anything. To budget times, we should look at what would it cost if we're going to have to put it in the budget. Yeah. And then by then, we'll know how is it working until then. Maybe uh, maybe we'll start getting less rain and the problem will alleviate itself. We've had a lot of rain. It'll be a lot of rain. Otherwise, I don't know how you can create a structure out there that will absorb it. 
bury a bunch of chambers or something. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. Maybe <sighs> bury some kind of a big tank and but, or just leech chambers. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the other problem you've got in that corner of the building is gas, electric, fiber optic, and yeah, th there's a bunch of stuff in that corner. I mean, a bunch of stuff in that corner. Lots of stuff to dodge to make it even more expensive. <laughs> So for the moment, as far as what we've got, we'll try to alleviate as best we can what we've got. Yeah. Going forward after that, as far as budget time. Yeah. We need to find out from the city <coughs> if we can. Well, that'll be the other thing. Who, who do we talk to at the city about I that? Suppose public works. Michael Rourke is one you talk to. All right. Well, I will get a hold of him some point and uh, try to get the initial as far as cost. I'm not going to dive in on that yet because no. it's all going to change. Well, we got to figure out where we're going to first. And if, we, if that's what we're going to entertain and sit them, get a whole house and have them give us an estimate, I guess. Okay. All right. I'll get a hold of him and ask him and uh, I'm sure he'll have to talk to somebody and we'll go from there. So, okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, there are several reporters for the office. 7542. Hello. Hi, Chris. We're ready for your report. Okay, thank you. <laughs> pretty steady in the recorder's office. We're still doing a lot of vital records for the, uh, the um, new driver's license that people are getting. The Real so, ID Act. So if somebody's going in for a new driver's license, do they have to get something from your office first? A birth certificate. Mm -hmm. If they don't have, if they you don't, don't have, have one or if you don't have a passport. And then a lot of the, the women that are, have to have a marriage license showing the name name change. <clears throat> so we're doing a lot of those too. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and I thought we were current on our driver's licenses, you know, in Minnesota with having their issues. I know. Mm -hmm. And I think it's by next October or something. Yeah. You have to have one. My license is due in October next year. So I think I just, <coughs> hang in just wait, yep. Procrastinate as long as I can. <laughs> well, I'll make the motion to approve the reverse part of the report. I'll second the motion. I motion for Jim Sullivan, second for the Derby to approve the report. Recorders, one minute report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those in favor say aye. I was going to let you know too, I was recently appointed to the um, ISAC Board of Directors, so oh, if you really? 
have any issues or anything and want me to bring them forward, I can we do that. A, we have a direct yeah. channel. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's the one you need to autograph. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, well, congratulations. Thank you. thank you. Representing the Recorders Association. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on our agenda we have to address? Yeah. We'll stand